So I've spent a year following the curly girl method, which means no silicones, no sulfates, no heat styling, and using the curly girl method process to try and revive my natural curls and waves. And oh my gosh, has a lot changed in that year. I feel like a whole different person, but that'd be a little bit too much to cover in one video. So today we are just gonna be focusing on the hair changes, my one year curly wavy hair transformation. We're gonna cover my whole routine for washing and styling all my favorite products, how I revive my hair between the washes, my tips, and everything that I've learned in the process of going from this to this. <laughs> exactly a year ago to the day as of this video going live, I posted that first video where I tried the Curly Girl Method for a month. And that video was, it was so much fun, but I definitely didn't go into that video intending for this to be the new normal. And so a lot has changed since that video. I use entirely different products, a lot of different techniques. We've got a lot to cover. So let's just get right into it. So let's start out with kind of going through how my hair has actually changed. What did a year on the Curly Girl Method even do? <laughs> Looking through these progress photos from the past year, my hair has grown quite a bit. Actually, I, I straightened it for the first time in this whole year back in December for Vlogmas. And before that, I didn't really realize how much it had grown. Like that really showed me how much length I've gained. With my hair being curly wavy, it kind of shrinks up. So the, the length isn't as obvious. But when I straightened it, I, I was like, oh crap, this is this is long. I did a vlog on it, so I'll link that in the description. It also just looks so much less frizzy and damaged than it did at the beginning. It looks healthy and soft and just better, I think. Especially the front pieces, which were just so fried from the heat damage and the straightening before I started the Curly Girl Method. I have them kind of pinned back right now, so I'll take them down so you can fully see. But these front pieces that frame my face, I feel like they used to just look kind of scraggly. They were so incredibly just dry and damaged and growing out that previous damage and then also not continuing to damage it because I'm not using heat styling. I feel like these front pieces just look so much better. It used to be that the bottom layer of my hair here looked so much different than the top layer because the top layer was just so overly heat damaged. And so growing out that damage and then not further damaging it with a straightener not only helped with it looking and feeling better, but I think it's also a big part of the growth. My hair also has a lot more curl to it than it did in the beginning. I feel like it's still in between curly and wavy. It's a mix of both. I don't really know where to classify it, but there are definitely way more curls in here than a year ago when it was mostly wave. Also in the past three or four months, I started using a lot less product in my hair, which we'll go more in depth about in the styling section. But I feel like my hair looks a lot less greasy and weighed down than it used to because I'm using less product and also just lighter weight products. I had two haircuts in the past year in January and June of 2020, and I am definitely overdue for another one. I feel like once I trim some, some of this weight off, it'll have a lot more spring and life to it. But I've just, I've been putting it off because COVID. <laughs> also, I, I haven't dyed my hair since I started the Curly Girl Method. I had a balayage done in November of 2019, so like a month before I started. So from about like here up is my natural color. I'm really loving how just low maintenance it is to not dye my hair. And it's also helped a lot, I think, with keeping it healthy, not bleaching it. So I think, I think I'm gonna stick with my natural color for the time being. Now let's talk wash routine and products. So I have three different wash routines that will classify as the co-wash, the weekly wash, and the reset wash. So I'll go through each and then also highlight the products that I use. Everything mentioned is Curly Girl Method approved, unless, unless I say otherwise, there is one product that's like a cheap product, but I'll call that one out when we get there and I'll have all the products linked in the description if you wanna try anything. So the co-wash or conditioner wash, this is basically doing a wet reset, detangling, adding in some conditioner for moisture, but that's, that's it, no shampoo. I do this one, honestly, just whenever I feel like it, usually like every other day or every three days. And we'll cover how I refresh and style my hair between these washes in a later section. But from what I've seen in the Curly Girl community, this this is way more than most people do co-washes. Most people will preserve their style for about a week or so. I tried that, but I just, I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. I really enjoy taking a full shower most days, getting my hair wet. It feels good. It wakes me up. 
especially after exercising, because I usually exercise in the morning and I hate that feeling of like sweat in my hair. And I found that I spent more time trying to revive three or four day hair than I did just hopping back in the shower and restyling it real quick. So to the shower, for the co-wash. So I just got my hair wet and now I'm gonna use the Not Your Mother's Tahitian Gardenia Flower and Mango Conditioner. This stuff is fairly priced. It's like $8 a bottle. It smells great, it works great. I think this is all you need really. So I'm gonna work this in with my fingers at first and then detangle with a wide tooth comb. As I detangle, sometimes I'll find spots that aren't fully wet that are still a little bit dry because I'm moving my hair around or there was like a knot that was kind of covering it from getting it fully wet at the beginning. So I'll just kind of like cut my hands and add more water to those spots as I go. You want your hair to be as wet as possible for maximum moisture and also it just absorbs the product better. Now that I feel like my hair is fully detangled and every piece is soaking wet, I mostly focus on the front pieces with this next step. I work the conditioner in with my fingers in small sections and just work out any of those smaller snags. This helps a lot with frizz, but it also takes a long time, which is why I really only do the front pieces because those help frizz my face. And once I feel like most of the snacks have been worked out, I'll kind of press in the product with my fingers like that. So my front sections are done and now I'm ready to rinse. Also, huge game changer if you're able to. Switching out the shower head for a removable one. Steven did this over the summer and I, I just, I swear by it. It made it so much easier to rinse my hair and get every bit of conditioner and product out. I feel like I get a much more full rinse this way than I used to with our regular shower head. But hold on, we're going actually right back to the shower to walk through my weekly wash. My regular wash, as the name says, I do this one about every week. Here is what we we're working with today. It was in braids and then it was up in a bun for a few days. So it needs some TLC. We're gonna start just by getting my hair wet. And now I'm gonna take this pre-shampoo mask from Pros and my wide tooth comb and actually do all the detangling before we even go in with a shampoo. And I focus this on any knotted sections that I feel, mostly on the lengths of my hair and this like under section that gets really matted. But also like sometimes I need it up here, like I feel a knot kind of close to my scalp. And what I learned is if I just go right in with the shampoo here, the shampoo can't like permeate my scalp as much and really get in there because the knots are blocking it. And so detangling first with this pre-shampoo mask really like primes my hair to be cleansed and it ends up giving me a much deeper clean in the end. And I try not to just pull at the knots like that, like there's a pretty big knot here. I'll start at the bottom and kind of work my way through so that I'm snagging the least amount of hair possible. Not gonna lie though, sometimes it is tempting to just freaking rip it out. <laughs> Takes a little bit longer this way, but it's better in the long run. So my hair is detangled. Look at that, so nice and smooth as it runs through. And as I went through, I added more water and more product to any of those problem areas. Now we're gonna rinse it and then shampoo. So with my weekly wash, I use a gentle non-sulfate cleanser. I'm not super picky about cleansers, but my two current favorites are the shampoo version of that Tahitian Gardenia, not your mother's conditioner, but shampoo. And then my Pro's custom shampoo, which I just have set to not have sulfates in it. And so I take my shampoo, apply it just to my scalp in here. We don't need to really touch the ends at all. Make sure I've got some on the bottom here, in the back. And I take my scalp scrubber, which if you do not have one of these, I am about to change your life. $8 on Amazon, best $8 I've ever spent. And I use this with the shampoo to really exfoliate my scalp and I get rid of any buildup, product, dandruff. It is amazing. Even though I'm using a, a gentle non-sulfate cleanser, using the scalp scrubber, get, it makes my scalp and my hair feel so freaking clean. So I just do this all over for like five minutes. Also, plus it feels amazing. It's like a scalp massage. And now I am rinsing. And now I just go in with that same Tahitian Gardenia conditioner. And I'll give it another detangle just to work in the product. And also sometimes I get little knots in there from going too hard with the shampoo scrubber. And I use that same technique from the co-wash where I'll kind of work it in with my fingers, get out any of those little snags, little rough spots, add more water or conditioner when needed and 
press it in. I'll rinse the conditioner out and that is my weekly wash. Now the reset wash. Every three to four weeks or so, I, I like to reset my hair by using a sulfate shampoo, which is not Curly Girl Method approved. This is one of those spots where I, I break the rules. There's a lot of Curly Girl Method rules and I think you just kind of got to find what works for you. After long enough, even with my weekly non-sulfate washes, my hair starts to feel dirty even after a weekly wash. And there just feels like there's some buildup on my scalp that I can't get rid of. And so we reset. So I start with the pre-shampoo mask and the wide tooth comb, same as the weekly wash and rinse. Then I'm gonna do the same technique as the weekly wash with the scalp scrubber, but with my cheap product, my sulfate shampoo. This is my current favorite. It is the Purology Hydrate Shampoo. It smells amazing and it just makes my scalp feel like so clean and fresh, but it can be pretty stripping, which is why I only use this like once a month-ish. And really focusing the shampoo just on the scalp, not on the ends of my hair, because we want the maximum scalp cleaning with minimal hair stripping. So we're all rinsed now, and I'm gonna go in with the Shea Moisture Hydrate and Repair Protein Treatment Mask to try and, and make up for any of the, the stripping effects of the sulfate shampoo. This product is, it is amazing. It's one of my favorite products. It makes my hair feel silky and soft and the protein is also really great for curl definition. So I'm gonna work this all the way through my hair, focusing on the mids to ends. And then I'm gonna let it sit on my hair for like 20 to 30 minutes. And so usually once I'm done working this product in, I'll move to the bath and relax or I'll tie my hair up and dry off but like put on a robe and then get back in the shower later when it's time to rinse out the mask. All right, product is fully worked in. I am gonna go soak in the bath while I wait. And then once it's done, I just rinse it out like normal and we get into styling. Now we are into the styling segment, how I style my hair after any of those washes. My current styling routine is, it's pretty quick and simple, especially compared to how many products I used to use. I've pared it down a lot. It's, it's quicker, it's easier and I, I think my hair just looks looser and lighter this way anyways. So after I get out of the shower, I don't wring my hair out or anything. I actually want it to retain as much water as possible before styling. So I spray in this Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Hold and Shine Moisture Mist. This mostly helps with frizz, but it also just makes my hair feel soft. <laughs> and a lot of Curly Girl Method folks will just go right into styling. They don't brush it again after the shower. I like to give it one last brush and also pick my part. I probably do lose a little bit of curl in the process, but it helps a lot with the frizz in the end. So it's a trade off that I'm happy to make. And now I'm gonna work in my Pro's Custom Styling Cream. This is one of those products that I really feel like just kind of changed the game for me. And now this is the only real style product that I use. So I rake it in with my fingers. I'll do that on both sides and then also flip my head over and do it. And then I take one last half squirt on each side and I scrunch it in. Do you hear that squish? <laughs> That's the sound I'm looking for to tell me if that my hair has retained enough moisture. All right, product is in, and now we are going to plop with a t-shirt. Plopping has really helped me reduce the dry time of my hair. It just kind of takes out that initial moisture, and it can also help the product to set in and the curls to set. But the key that I've learned is, A, use a t-shirt instead of a towel. The fibers in a regular towel are much more rough, and it can cause a lot of frizz. T-shirts are softer, they're more gentle, and B, second thing, you don't want to tie it up really tight. I feel like pre-curly girl method, I would always tie my hair up in a really tight towel. You want it to be loose. You want the hair to have room to breathe. So I try to do it really lightly. So the hair is in. I'm gonna really loosely kind of gather it up top. And now I'll let it set for like 20 minutes. I'll get dressed or do my skincare or check my email. And then we'll get into the final step, which is drying. So I just took the plop out and on most days I would just let it air dry from here. But I don't know, maybe once a week, once every two weeks or so, I will blow dry it. And I think undoubtedly my hair looks its best when I take the time to blow dry. But I just don't like taking the time most days, but today, we are going to blow dry. So I do sections and I put the section in the bowl before I turn it on and I put it on the highest air setting but the lowest heat setting. I'll leave it here for like 20 seconds and then I let it 
down. So I'll do that all around my head until my hair is like, I don't know, anywhere between like 70 and 90% dry. And then after that point, I just let it air dry. Also, another little tip that really helped me is flipping my head in all different directions when I dry. That way the hair isn't like plastered to just one spot. I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'll see you guys in like 20 minutes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and retire the blow dryer for the day. I'm pretty happy with how dry I got it. There's still some dampness up at the root and in the under layers, but pretty dry. And it's funny too with the curly girl method. I feel like I, I never, I never really know what my hair is gonna look like. Like today, the left side of my head is like a perfect hair day for me. This little front piece curled up really cute. I have some little spirals that clump together in the front. And then the right side of my hair, it just, it wasn't cooperating as much today. These front pieces have some frizz and they're just not curling as well as the under layer. So there's always an element of surprise with my hair of what's it actually gonna look like when it's dry. Later on during the day when my hair is fully dry, sometimes I'll add a drop or two of this pro's hair oil just to help tame any frizz that comes in and also add some shine also sometimes i will pin back the front pieces i'll probably end up doing that today with this little section so yeah that is how i style my hair <laughs> so once i've done my style i've worn it for the day and i want to preserve it overnight i use a silk hair wrap and it works like a charm i only started doing this a couple months ago but it has been a game changer and before we get into how i actually wrap my hair like this i think it's really important to acknowledge that this practice comes from the black community and black women especially have been using scarves and wraps like this and this technique for a really really long time and it can be super helpful for all hair types too it has been great for mine but I think it's important to acknowledge that this is not just some new trend that's popped up and if you're wanting to try this it's great to buy from a black owned business I got mine from Phoebe Luna and Jennifer the owner of that business is actually part of our community here she's a viewer of the channel so her website is linked in the description. Her hair silks are amazing and I would love if y'all want to go support her. So I'm about to head to bed, but we are going to make sure that this hair lives to see another day. I just follow the tutorial that Jennifer posted on the Phoebe Luna Instagram page. So I gather my hair into a loose ponytail right at the top of my head, wrap the scarf from the back and cross it in the front, tie it together in the back, and then we take the extra fabric on both sides and tie tuck it through, kind of loop it through the fabric. I'll kind of pull this fabric back to cover it and I'm ready for bed. I am still not great at this, but I'm able to do it well enough that it will stay on during the night. And I also wear a sleep mask. So that kind of like straps it in. Good morning. Do you see what I mean? How I sleep mask like kind of keeps it on even if it loosens up a little bit. Okay, let's take this off and see what we're working with here. I feel like it looks pretty good just on its own today with no, you know, trying to style it or add water. Sometimes these front pieces are a little bit scraggly, so I'll just add some water to try and spring them back up a little bit. But my favorite, favorite thing to do with second day hair like this, hold on, let me grab a scrunchie. A little half up pony with a scrunchie. I love the high pony look. This is actually probably my favorite way to wear my hair. I wear it like this a lot. And if the top layer isn't looking super stellar, it doesn't even matter. I don't even have to try to fix it. On the days when I don't wanna do my hair, I don't wanna worry about it, I don't wanna style it, there are two different things that I'll do. Either just throw my second or third day hair up in a scrunchie bun and call it a day. If I wanna go the extra mile, I'll leave out the two front pieces to frame my face and reset them with some water or the second thing I'll do, if I'm like thinking in advance about not wanting to style my hair, is after a wash, I won't put any product into my hair and then I'll put it into two braids. I think the braids are really cute on their own and it keeps my hair from getting tangled. So I can wear the braids as many days as I want and just rebraid it in the morning to add back in any loose strands. And when I'm done with the braids, I can have a no maintenance hair day again the day after. Take the hair out of the braids and I'll have some nice loose waves that took me no time. So after a year of doing this, finding my routine, healing my hair, what have I learned? I sprinkled a lot of my tips throughout the video, but this section's just gonna kind of be anything I didn't cover previously that I think could be helpful. First, for finding Curly Girl Method approved products, the website Curlspot is a game changer. You just copy and paste the ingredients list for any product and it will tell you if the ingredients are Curly Girl Method approved or not. Second, the r slash curly hair subreddit is amazing for tips and advice and seeing different techniques and even just 
just different hair types and routines in action. They also have a holy grail products list for all different price points that they're constantly updating. So if you're wanting to start the Curly Girl method and it seems just kind of overwhelming, I would start there. They have a ton of really great resources to get you going. Third, styling my hair in the way I like and following the Curly Girl method, it, it's kind of high maintenance, but you don't have to style your hair every single day. You don't have to keep up with that maintenance all the time. Throw it in a bun, have days where you wash it, but just don't style it, it's all good. <laughs> Number four, it's okay to break the rules. They are not etched in stone. Just find, start with the Curly Girl method and then find a modification that works for you. If you wanna use some non-Curly Girl method approved products, do it. If you want to wear your hair natural most days, but like straightening it from time to time, that's totally fine. Straighten it. I don't think it has to be all or nothing, even though it can feel that way sometimes. When I, when I decided that I wanted to straighten my hair for the first time in a year back in Vlogmas, I was terrified that I was going to fry my hair and lose all this progress just from one day of straightening. But my hair was totally fine. And I had a lot of fun just switching it up like that. I'm going to keep following the curly girl method for the most part, but I think I might start straightening my hair every couple months or so when I just feel like it and I want to try something different. And also when I just want to have low maintenance hair for a few days, that is always nice. And fifth, last thing, I personally, I just feel so much more empowered with my natural hair. I love my curly wavy hair. It feels just so much more me. And I am so glad that I decided to try this randomly for a video 13 months ago. I really like it. I'm really happy with the progress that I've made. And I'm really glad I've found more ways to kind of connect with my natural self. So that's it. That is my one year update transformation on the Curly Girl method. Thanks so much for watching. Be confident, be kind to your body and your hair. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.